Hi, welcome to Let's Talk Gardening. I'm Norma Samuel with the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, UF IFAS Extension in Sumter County. On today's episode, we'll be talking about the pesticide label. I'll walk you through the specifics on a sample label. So let's go look at a label. Let's examine this pesticide label. I am using this for demonstration purposes only, so it does not by any means indicate an endorsement of the product. This product has been used before, so I have wiped it down thoroughly with gloves on, of course, so you won't see me have gloves on, but I have taken the necessary precaution to make sure the container has been cleaned. The manufacturer of this product is Organicide and the brand name is Worm and Caterpillar Control. You can have multiple manufacturers using the same active ingredient. The active ingredient is what's gonna kill the, pro the, the pest and you can have multiple manufacturers using the same active ingredient but with a different brand name. So you may find this particular product with a different manufacturer under the brand name Dipel, for example. Here you can see on the front of the label, it tells you what this is gonna control. It also tells you that it's a biological insecticide for organic gardening. It tells you also that you can apply and have a same day. To me, there's no benefit to you spraying and then harvesting the same day. So go ahead and harvest and then spray. This product can be used on fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, and shade trees. So that's a good thing. You can use it pretty much on most things in your yard. On the left-hand side, you see a QR code. That box there is what we call a QR code. And that you can use your phone to scan that code and it will take you to the label. On the front of the label, you also find information on the amount of product in the container. So in this case, it's 16 fluid ounces. And there's an ingredient statement here. So I went through the ingredient before. The active ingredient is Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Kerstaki. And this is a bactericide that works very well on Lepidopteran pests and it paralyzes the gut of the insect. The active ingredient, there's 98.35% of it in the container, and the other 1.65% is actually other or inert ingredients. At the front of every label, you see this caution statement that says, keep out of the reach of children. There's also the word caution, and that has to do with the toxicity of the product. And toxicity refers to, in this case, the acute or short-term toxicity. The toxicity is measured in lethal dose, and the lethal dose is referred to as the LD50, and that's the amount of the active ingredient that it will take to kill the organism, um, 50 kill 50% of the population. I've turned the bottle over and pretty much the same thing that's on the front of the label is on this cover label on the back here. And in addition to what was on the front, you see here, it has the EPA registration number. So this is an identifier that connects with this particular product. Also on the back of the label is the distributor. And you see that there's the website also listed there. So if for some reason you need to get in touch with the manufacturer of the product, that information is there and you have the EPA 
registration number to which you must reference. Throughout the conversation we've been having so far, I've referred to the term label. Another term that you should become familiar with is labeling. And labeling is what's on the product itself in addition to anything that the manufacturer references to you. So here you see the website and I recommend you visit the website to find any additional information on the product. I'm now going to open this little booklet that's back here. And this is where you're going to find lots of additional information about the product. Here you can see first thing is information about first aid. What do you do if you accidentally get this product in your eyes and it gives you instruction for flushing your eyes. And there's also information there about the poison control center. So you can contact that hotline if you um, get, you know, there's some ingestion or anything like that with this product. There's also a precautionary statement on the label. And it talks about hazards to humans and domestic animals. And because it has the signal word caution, it's an eye irritant and you should avoid this product contacting your skin and clothing and you should avoid breathing in any vapors and wash with soap and water thoroughly after handling this product. Also on the label, it gives you information on environmental hazards. So here it will tell you information such as keep away from storm drains or ditches. It will also tell you if the product is toxic to fish and mammalian life in you know that you have in water bodies so do read the product and see what the environmental hazards are some labels will tell you whether or not that product is toxic to bees so if it's toxic to bees you want to apply that product when bees are not active in your garden or your landscape also on the label is information on storage and disposal. It is important that you store your products in a locked area and keep them out of the reach of children and store in a cool, dry place. They can become inactive or reduced effectiveness if you have them at temperatures over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Always keep your products in the original container. Um, that way there's no mistaking what that product is. If for some reason, you know, you have several different pesticides and you, the label got worn and you don't know what the product is anymore, there's an 800 number there that you can call for disposal of the unused product. So on the other side of the label, there's information on directions for use and it tells you there how often you need to repeat applications of the product. And if you notice right there on the directions for use, it says it is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. So. That is why it is critical that you read and follow, read and follow the instructions on the label because it is against the law for use the product in a manner inconsistent with the label. There's information on how to apply. So it tells you about filling the tank, whether or not you need to agitate the sprayer to keep the product in suspension. So there's all that good information there. Um, it also gives you information on the rate of application. So if you're using it for fruits and vegetables, you see that the rate of application is a little lower than if you're using it for shade trees and ornamentals. 
So because you're using it on vegetable gardens, um, that doesn't mean you instantly just mix the same rate for trees and ornamentals um, because there are different pests on these as you can see. So follow the instructions on the label. Yes, you can use less product than what is recommended on the label. However, you cannot use more product. You do not want to be applying the lower rate of the product too often because that way the insects can develop resistance. So always use the recommended rate. Also here it gives you information on the warranty and liability of the product. So these are all information that I recommend that you read through. Again, it is critical that you read, follow the instructions on the label because it is against the law for you to use the product in a manner inconsistent with the label. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Let's Talk Gardening. I hope I've convinced you of the importance of reading a pesticide label in its entirety before application of the product. My name is Norma Samuel with the University of Florida IFAS Extension in Sumter County. Have a great day.